original supercontinent that will collide with one another. And if, if they collide with one another, they'll actually push one another up to produce mountain chains. And so what you have is that the, the ocean floor is down warped, uh, suppressed, pushed down, as you've got one uh, part of the ocean floor going under the other. And of course, if it's near a continent, such as in the west coast of the US, you're going to have a lot of, in a catastrophic global flood, you're going to have a lot of sediment pouring into that, that trench, which is going to fill up. But you get to the point where uh, you fill it up, continued compression is going to crumple those sediments. And uh, once the process slows right down, you're going to get uh, a rebound effect. Instead of the pushing down, you're going to get a rebound effect. And so the crumpled sediments will then get pushed up till they're in a new equilibrium state. And so you'll take folded crumpled sediments and push them up to form those mountain chains. And that's exactly the sort of process that would have formed the Rockies. The idea of recent catastrophic plate tectonics is rejected by most geologists. They believe that continental drift was slow and gradual over millions of years. Now you think about it for a moment. If you have slow and gradual processes, imagine two cars colliding at one kilometre per hour. Are they going to do much damage? Not at all. But if you have two cars colliding at 100 miles per hour each, bang, you're going to get them pushed up. And that's the concept of how it works with catastrophic plate tectonics two continental fragments, say India colliding with Asia, wham, pushes up the Himalayas. And we can see all that evidence of crumpling. Uh, and uh, the rocks that are now at the top of the Himalayas at uh, Mount Everest were, ha actually have fossils in them, which means they were originally down on the ocean floor. And they've been pushed up above sea level almost seven miles. Sedimentary rock covers most of the Earth's surface. The conventional view is that the sediments were deposited gradually over billions of years. The Grand Canyon is cut through sedimentary rock, and it's often seen as a slice through time. This is some, uh, an example of some carbonaceous shales that are present uh, in the low tract of ground directly behind me here uh, from the Grand Canyon series. Uh, it is thought just in the period of time represented in uh, this hand specimen uh, that consists of uh, probably 100 to 200 different layers of various mud and, and very fine sand layers that each one of these little cycles is likely to represent deposition uh, within a period of, let us say, six months or a year, so that we can be fairly sure that there could be hundreds of years deposited in this four-inch thickness. If we then were to walk down into the bottom of the canyon and notice that there is, in fact, hundreds and hundreds of feet of exactly this rock unit, we start to imagine that a very long period of time is represented in the sedimentary strata. Sedimentary rock is formed when particles are deposited by water and eventually compacted. The creationists believe that the layers of sediment were formed rapidly by a devastating global flood, then shaped by subsequent regional catastrophes. Laminae, these are very, very thin beds. And in some rock units, you see alternations of these thin beds. And the interesting thing is that people often thought that each little thin bed had to be deposited separately. There's now a lot of evidence uh, that these all form at once, as it were. In the laboratory, you can start with a mixture of, of grains and you can let them settle out in water or air and you'll get them settle out automatically into these alternating bands, these laminae. And the same happened at Mount St. Helens during one of, those, one of the eruptions there. In one afternoon, you had a 25-foot thick layer uh, rock unit formed with all these thin laminae. And uh, it was as a result of hurricane velocity, uh, steam-driven flow of ash that just had a mixture of, of grain sizes and it settled out into all these fine laminae. Geologist Dr. Stephen Austin at the Institute for Creation Research in San Diego. 
he observed that distinct stratified layers were formed rapidly during the eruption of Mount St. Helens volcano in 1980. I had thought that slow and gradual processes create layers. And boy, was I wrong. Uh, look at what happened at Mount St. Helens. The catastrophic event formed strata rapidly. That's generally now recognized by geologists that catastrophic geologic events form stratification rapidly. I had thought that the, the slow and gradual process would form layers and that the catastrophe would homogenize everything and make a whole mixed deposit. At Mount St. Helens, it didn't. The rapid catastrophic flows were able to segregate the coarse and the fine particles into distinct layers. During uh, these very rapid uh, volcanic events, giant flow-like surges were formed where gas-charged uh, suspensions of particles were moving at 100 miles per hour over the ground surface. As these uh, gas-charged slurries of volcanic gas and particles slowed down, they deposited a layered deposit. We have up to 600 feet of deposits at Mount St. Helens, even thin layered uh, deposits, some of them uh, less than uh, millimeters thick. I don't think anybody should say that because the layers of the, of the earth are so distinctive and so plentiful that we must have billions of years of earth history. I think that's a, that's a faulty argument. Evidence of rapid formation of rock layers supports the creationists' claim that much of the sedimentary rock that spans continents and covers mountains could have formed when the supercontinent was ripped apart and flooded. At the Engineering Research Center of Colorado State University, Dr. Pierre Julien disagrees with the creationists. But his experiments in sedimentation, together with Guy Berton, show that distinct sedimentary layers can be deposited very rapidly. Experiments at a fairly small scale show that uh, if you have a continuous supply of fine and coarse sands, you can hydraulically separate them to form to form a strata of, of coarse sands and strata of fine sands. The experiments show that the formation of stratified layers depends on the size, shape, and density of the particles. By pouring eight tons of sand mixture together with water through a 60-foot flume, it was found that coarse and fine particles separate out, giving the appearance of laminated strata, with all the features of deltas, dunes, and ripple marks. Dr. Larry Vardaman, an atmospheric physicist with the Institute for Creation Research, who finds that the Genesis account of creation is a reliable account of Earth history. If you look back to the biblical account of the catastrophic events of the flood, where you had tremendous amount of magma released, volcanic activity, continents being uh, broken apart, uh, mountain building, uh, there would have been a tremendous amount of heat released in that type of a process. Uh, we believe that much of that residual heat was left in the oceans and because when ocean water is much warmer it evaporates much more readily. In the polar regions you could accumulate uh, snow at the rate of inches per day which could accumulate as much as several hundred feet per year. So we believe we can explain the accumulation of ice sheets in the polar regions, glaciers in the mountains in a very short period of time, and in fact the Ice Age itself. These early computer models indicate a few hundred years following the catastrophe. We'd start to see uh, the, the atmosphere driven very strongly by the, the, the high temperatures in the ocean, a lot of moisture pumped up into the high latitudes into the polar regions, so much snow produced that it was impossible for that snow to melt during the summertime, and rapid buildup of, of large ice sheets. So we're talking about centuries after the catastrophe as far as the time scale for an ice age. Physicist Dr. Russell Humphreys. Other evidence from geology, from the rocks and, and strata, 
show that the Earth's magnetic field has actually reversed its polarity back and forth from north to south uh, during the time when the fossil layers were being laid down. And I developed a theory to explain how these reversals could be very rapid uh, and take place within days or weeks rather than over millions of years. And uh, so during the time that the Genesis flood layers were being laid down, at the same time the Earth's magnetic field was changing its direction on a matter of days or weeks. Now this uh, was thought to be impossible a few years ago uh, because uh, evolutionists just thought that things did not happen fast enough in the Earth's core to reverse the Earth's magnetic field very rapidly. But recently, evidence showed that these reversals did take place very rapidly within a matter of days. But if you take today's